and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Tell Me Why Part Five. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's already Part Five, and it's getting more and more interesting. We have to find a file here uh, about the whole incident with the mother, and things are seeming to get more and more suspicious as Eddie wasn't telling the truth, and basically no one is really telling the truth. Tess was trying to be beat around the bush and Eddie didn't tell everything. Sam is not really letting, he's not lying about stuff, but he's having issues emotionally as it seems, so I'm not really comfortable doing all of this, but I don't really think I have a choice otherwise, so we'll have to do it. So let's find this, uh, this box. Nope. R6. Not this one either. Uh, where's the damn box? No, that's not it. Nope. Well? Oh, sorry. Huh. What was that reference number again? 05 R68 653. 05. 05 Was 05 R68 or something was it? Is this? Closed file Closed files up there, okay So that's what he said, yeah Um Wait, this could be Wait, this could be it Come on, look at not this one either. Mm. Oh, sir, R68, there Here it is. Go. Okay, so now let's see what's happening. What's going on? Looks like a step by step record of the investigation. Investigation, case number 68653. 03, uh, 3rd of January 2005, 2235, notified by my partner officer Christian Holt of accident at 12 Canary Road, Dallas Crossing, AK 77477, white female identified as Mary Ann Ronan, DOB, uh, 7th of August 1964, fallen over deck into lake, audio recording tape, number 36359 and Number 36360, Brown, 2258 and 2258, that's the time. Holt and I arrived at the scene, briefed by patrol officer Jay Chan, numbers 5622 of incident, Brown, 2307 hours, located witness, minors named redacted, minors named redacted, Ronan and minor name redacted, Ronan. Uh, DOB 37, date of birth, of course. Uh, 3rd of uh, July or June? I always mix those two up. 1994, children of Mary Ann Ronan couldn't get a statement from them as they were under dire stress and shock. The children were taken under on the care of patrol officer Jay Chen. Brown said at 11.41. A coroner investigation, T. Dixon, arrived at the scene. Rolled prints of victim crime lab, Tech O. Tully, 5629, at the scene. Completed photographer photographs of the scene and recovered an unlicensed wrestle 3121 shotgun. Bullet recovered from location, Barn Brown. Hmm, that's weird. Well? So far, I'm not seeing anything we didn't know already. It does reference some other files and audio recordings, though. You might be able to look those up on the computer. Even if our file hasn't been digitized yet, they may already have it in the appendix. Yeah, that's what the email stated. Um, 23 past 12. Coroner took possession of body. Cleared scene. Brown. Um, four after one. Interviewed children at station. Stated that after Ronan's hair was cut short by sister Ronan. Uh, Mary Ann threatened Ronan, that's probably Tyler, uh, with a gun. When Allison Ronan fled from her, she pursued child. No, when Tyler Ronan fled from her, she pursued child to the dogs. Uh, Allison Ronan 
No, um, the, they reported that Tyler Ronan stabbed Marianne Ronan, who was still threatening the child before falling over in the water. Witnesses state they called 911 shortly after. Uh, 6.30 in the morning, canvas, canvassed crime scene, did not recover a pair of scissors claimed by Tyler Ronan. Um, presented this case to the DAB, crew, DAB Cruz charged minor Ronan with homicide, case TA. Okay. <laughs> That's not something we have anything not really worthwhile this. Well, that's all. Okay, so we need to get out of here. Quick. Make sure nobody sees us. Wait. What's happening? What's this? Why? Why can't I do anything? Wait. Oh, did I have to? Oh, whoops. There might be other references. There might be other references on the computer. What computer? Oh, this computer. Oops. All right, I'm in. You can search by keywords. What should I look for? I don't know. Marianne Ronan, March 1st, 2005. <laughs> well, uh, okay. Crime report. 24 hour homicide report, victim information, crime summary. Can I. Autopsy report. Can I open this or. Oh wait, there's the number storage 05 R61889 R uh, 05061. Okay. References 05 R61889. There was a 05 here. That's probably not it. Wait, hold on. I Need to find something with, with R61. 66. No, no, 63. No, that's, that's not 61. It. Oh, it's right beside it. Okay, there. Okay, let's see what's happening here. What's in this one? Oh, wait, what? Crime report. Report, ha a report of homicide. Victim name Marianne Ronan. Race, Caucasian, gender, female, height, 5'6", uh, age, 41, date of birth, July 8th, 1906, wait, July, wasn't that, oh, wait, of course, stupid, I'm looking at this with European format, uh, driver's license number, foreign language spoken, none, occupation, unemployed, location of occurrence, 12 Canary Road, Dells Crossing, AK, Date and time of occurrence, on the 1st of March, 2005, 22 and 10 o'clock. Date and time reported to the police department, same day at 29. On the dock at Lakeside, victim threatened her child with a gun. Child stabbed her with a pair of scissors. Victim subsequently fell into the lake. Reporting employees, initials, last name, serials, no. EIC detail, E. Brown, C. Holtz. One. Combined evidence, item, quantity, article, shotgun, serial number, register owner, Samuel A. Kensky. Okay, so the the so I was right that um so it was I was completely on point that uh, Sam gave Marianne the gun. Or probably put it up there to help her protect herself from bears, probably, or something. Um, and that's why he was emotionally walking away from the... And that's the part I probably don't know. But uh, I'll get to know that later on in the game, probably. But I think Sam walked away um, emotionally from the uh, garage. Because he thought that it was his fault that she took the gun to the child. So, and I think that he still thinks that um, that Marianne really tried to kill them. So, there's no, or he knows more than he lets on, which I guess there is some, but he was a bit emotional about it. So, I guess he blames himself. That's what I think at the moment. So, let's uh, read on. 
Grand Rustler 3121, metal 9mm, misc dark wood. Okay. Let's turn this around. I found a summary of everything. Wow, this is a real detective novel. Yeah. Brown's quite the wordsmith. He's not a writer, Tyler. Narrative crime summary on March 1st, 2005, at around 2200 hours, this, the victim Marianne Ronan, a 41 year old white female, exited her home and entered her garage to start loading a wrestler 3121 9mm shotgun. Shortly after, her child, uh, Tyler Ronan, 11 year old, entered the garage to display a new haircut given by her sister, Tyler Ronan, according to witnesses. Huh? By her sister Ellison Ronan. According to witnesses, Tyler Ronan's statement when she saw the child child's haircut. That's Marianne. Damn, that's annoying. Well oh, that's a minor, so that's probably Tyler. Marianne became enraged and threatened Tyler Ronan's Ronan with a shotgun. Tyler Ronan fled the garage toward the lake, calling for help. Marianne followed, still armed out onto the dock on the southern side of the property. Hearing the noise, witness Ellison Ronan also came out of the house toward the dock where she observed Tyler Ronan under threat from Marianne defended himself by, st by stabbing a stabbing mother with a pair of scissors. At the time, both witnesses state Marianne Ronan lost consciousness and fell into the lake. At, 20 at 1029, Dallas Crossing Police, Office Police Department Officer Christian Holt, number 55899, received a phone call from some of the one of the two detailing the incident patrol officer jay chan 5622 was dispatched to the scene upon arrival there set they set up a containment of the scene began a crime scene log and started tending to both juveniles um so see their statement for further description Notification of detectives. On March 1st, 2005, Officer Christian Holt notified his partner, Officer Eddie Brown, by telephone of the incident before dispatch, dispatch to the scene. Investigation. Holt and Brown arrived at the scene at 10.58. They noted that the crime scene was located entirely outdoors. Canary Road is a secluded road mostly comprised of a few residential cottages. Detectives observed a, load, a loaded wrestler shotgun on the dock. No rounds had been discharged. They directed forensic personnel to recover items. Detectives were directed to witness Tyler and Ellison Ronan. Witness one of the two. Ronan stated that she heard... Okay, that's Ellison. That she heard a scream while she was upstairs in her bedroom. She ran down the stairs and looked over the kitchen window and saw her sibling and their mother. Marianne on the docks. Marianne was threatening her child with a gun. Ellison try no. Uh... Okay, so that's Tyler tried to run away, but Marianne threatened that she was going to shoot. According to both witnesses, she stated, "I'm going to kill you." Um, Tyler Ronan then stabbed Marianne Ronan with their pair of scissors trying to escape. Marianne then fell into the water unconscious. Evidence item number one, wrestler 3121, 9mm, refer to forensic report for further details. Okay, so I need to get that forensic, forensic dis uh, report. Good. Now I need to see what that other one was. Um, oh wait, wow. Um, Marianne, this one. The autopsy report is 0562. Okay, I need to check out 05 R62 766. Okay, 05 R62. Hope we can find it somewhere. 66. Hmm. That's 63. This is. Oh, this is R62. It's just here. That's weird. I have her autopsy report. Okay. She. Yeah. 
What is it? She drowned. Stab wound was non-fatal. Oh shit. Medical autopsy report. Autopsy class A. Date second of March. Nine ten. Doctor Gray. Uh, Forty two. DOA post drowning. One stab wound. Left loin. Two degree to assault. See scissors by daughter. Ill known. DMH. Body fourth seen in mouth and nose, cerebral edema, water lodged lungs, see preliminary edema, all kinds of weird, weird fluid content, three inch stab wound, left loin above PSIS, appears and the mortem, fluid in paranasal synesis. Uh, okay, so basically she drowned, yeah. <laughs> Um, other conditions contributing, but not related to the immediate cause of death. Homicide determined, uh, even other than na na natural cause. How did injury occur with scissor victim then fell over the dock in freezing la lake water? Was operation performed for condition for any condition state above? No. Organ procurement technician as Silva witnessed the autopsy TCPD that de dead. Eddie Brown? Or dead. No. Um, 15 centimeter stab wound, non fatal. 21 death by drowning. Prior examination review, body tag, clothing, x ray, med records. Heart blood, moral, urine, regular number one, screen, alcohol. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. So she didn't die from stabbing, but drowned. Shit, shit, shit. Eddie's coming up the stairs. What do I do? What do I do? I don't know. Um. But, uh, yeah, you can stall him, but... Uh, stall him. Stall him? No shit, Sherlock! Say I'm in the bathrooms. Get him into his office. Yeah, that's probably the best. Tell him you need to talk in his office. That's leading him out of the way. Everything. I knew this would happen. By the way, there's a camera over there, so I'm probably fucked as hell. Not really any. Wait, can I? Everything okay now, or what? Kellos Crossing Police Department. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. I can hear you. It, it's my mom. She she fell in the water and she's not coming up. Okay, where are you now? Home. We're home. Are you alone? Where's your dad? It's just me and my sister. All right, honey, can you give me your address? Twelve Cannery Road. Please hurry. Just stay right where you are, okay? We're sending someone out to help you. Don't hang up! Okay. Wait. Here. Bingo. 0501. References 0501COMBR. There, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, here it is. That should be it. Jesus. Unbelievable. Brown reported Mary Ann to Child Services. What? Where are you? What's going on? Can't do anything with this then. That's the only thing. So. Brown reported. That's the call you made. Well, that's probably gonna make. Got something. This is Officer Eddie Brown. Hello, Officer Brown. This is Simone Prue from the Office of Child Services. Hello, Mrs. Prue. I'm calling about the Ronin family. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that we will be moving forward with the case. Uh, I see. 
Is there anyone additional we should interview while we're in the area? Yeah, um, Samuel Kansky is a close friend of the family. Uh-huh. K-A-N-S... K-Y. Great. Your caseworker, Sandy Black, will be arriving on March 5th. She'll drop by the station first thing in the morning. Mrs. Prue, how worried should we be? Mm, I really can't say until I have a full picture of the situation. Of course. Well, have a good afternoon, Mrs. Prue. You too, sir. I just listened to Brown chatting with OCS. He really did it. He reported her. What if he was just a go-between? He might not have had a choice. We need to keep digging. Child services? Reporting? No. Sam? Ready? Wait. Hospital discharge. Hospital discharge papers released from uh, Form Ronan 05R68. I need to check out 05R68 MISC. There it is. I, I knew I where that one was, so that's good. Wait. 05R68, that's this one. Wait, no, I'm not sure. No. Uh, which one was it? Uh, which one was it? Dallas Crossing Police Department. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, hello, I can hear you. Dallas Crossing Police Department. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, hello, I can oh, hear no, you. Wait, what's the child service? It's my mom. She, she fell. There it is. Hospital discharge. 05R68 MISC. Oh, okay, so I. 05R68 MISC. I know where that one is. It's this one. Here we go. Come on. Huh. Why is that here? St. Mado Clinic, 638 West 3rd Street, Juno, AK, phone, patient, last name Ronan, date of birth. Wait, this is. Describes in pressure in the head, headache, loss of consciousness, nausea, dazed, hospital release. I, patient name, or our legal guardian, Tessa Fecky, hereby released St. Mido Clinic from liability following the patient as per terms of the release agreement. I have read and understood the hosp this hospital release form. Patient signature hospital stamp. Wait, what? Wait. About... Who is this about? This is... Is this about Allison or is this about Tyler? That's weird. If that's about Tyler, then why was he in a his name came up? Search for her. Here. Thank you. Theft report, child neglect. Neglect report 2005 201. Okay. I need to check out 2005 201 546. Nope. Are you finding anything? Just give me a minute. It's a mess in here. Come on, we need to hurry. 2005. What the? Wait, that was that one, right? 5201. Oh, wait, 201, not 210. There. Wait, what the hell? Tessa accused her of child neglect. Dallas Crossing Police Department Summary Incident Report. Incident. Incident code, incident type, theft. For tracking number, location, uh, approved by Eddie Brown, location type, store, theft type, shoplifting, associated person, person report, street name, Richmond, get the birth, age of July, oh yeah, person report is Marianne. So, Tess gave, uh, uh, sent in a theft report against Marianne. Okay, so what's this about? 31 
31st of January, at approximately 10.40, 10.45, Marianne and Marianne Ronan entered Fanny Vidi Fanny Vidi Benny Vedi Vecchi, owned by Thomas and Tessa Vecchi, Mr. Vecchi stated that she observed Ronan browse the aisles for approximately 10 minutes while chatting dis distractedly with her. Miss Vecchi stated that she was behind the cash register and did not have the direct eye contact on Ronan at all times. Vecchi stated that after those 10 minutes, Ronan asked Vecchi if she had any organic mosquito incense in stock. Vecchi informed Ronan that she did, that she did not, but stated she believed this demand was all due to the winter season. Ronan left without purchasing anything else. Vecchi stated that after approximately five minutes, she walked back through the aisle where Ronan had been, had been and discovered a missing box of detergent. Vecchi stated that she had very recently restocked the shelves and no one else had been in the store that morning. Becky stated that she has suspected Ronan of shoplifting before in the past, notably while in the company and possibly with the aid of Ronan's two children. Becky stated that she has all that she also had a reason to suspect Ronan to be guilty of child neglect, but they don't eat and are exposed to all kinds of inappropriate influences. Becky believed it's impossible. It is possible some form of abuse may be occurring at the home. Well, that, as far as I've seen, that's not true. There wasn't really any child abuse. That's weird. I need to get moving. Wait, so that's done then? Shit. I'm sorry, Tyler. I couldn't stop him. He's coming your way. Get out. Uncle, I... We didn't mean I'm to... I'm not going to repeat myself. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Yeah. I said move it. Everything you told me is just a hey, hey. lie. Get off me. Rather spend the night here? Well, come on! I, just told I said, truth. don't fucking touch me! Go on! And consider yourselves lucky, your family! Well. Let's talk this privately. Let's not get everyone involved. You're right. Family. And for Allison's sake, we should talk. About what? We well, saw everything? our file. We know about social services. Why? Why did you turn your back on her? Why did Tessa? Okay. Yeah, you're right. Talk. We need to talk. Damn. Explain yourself. This is interesting. The winter before your mother's death was <clears throat> hard. Delos Crossing was snowed in for months. Most roads were closed and plane supplies were scarce. Mm -hmm. Everyone was struggling. Especially Marianne. Yeah. She was always just scraping by. And that winter left nothing to scrape up. Even if locals had found time to help her. I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure your mother would have accepted. Hmm. But Tessa came to you, she was struggling. You're saying Tessa reported her mother because she was having supply issues? Tessa came to me because she was honestly concerned. Right. Hmm. I was legally required to report Tessa's complaint, even if I didn't agree. Tessa stabbed her in the back, so you called child services. So you took her word for it and called child services? Failure to provide adequate food, lack of appropriate supervision, Inattention to a child's psychological care? Like it or not, she had a case. What? It's bullshit. Just following the law then. Right. Is that why you came over that day? The day she died? To warn her about social services? <sighs> she loved you two so damn much. She deserved a chance. I... 
I didn't see it coming. Huh. I wonder why she was pulling that gun then. She... I don't know. Right there, she... Must have decided it was over. I thought always telling each other the truth was our number one rule. Still is, little moose. And yet you still lied. I didn't want you two putting yourselves through unnecessary hurt. But you're adults and that was your choice to make. I'm, I'm truly sorry. Thank you, Uncle. Hmm. Well, I understand why you didn't do it. But... Don't be a dick. Just like that, huh? Must be nice to have a daughter who lets you off the hook that easy. Eddie, you keep trying to point your finger at Tessa, but you have to take responsibility for your part in our mother's death. I've asked myself over and over for the past 10 years what I could have done different. Mm. I know I made a big mistake with you two here. And you've got every right to be angry. Being a father, well, it's a pretty tough job. I've tried my best. And I'd like to try my best with you too, Tyler, if you want it. Wow. Yeah, we could get there with time. I'm open to getting there. But it's going to take some time before we're a big, happy family. I respect that. That's good. It's hard work rebuilding trust. You but you've know. got a place here whenever you need it. <laughs> nice. That's really nice. Group hug? <laughs> That's uh, asking a bite no. question. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> That's maybe asking a bit much, man. Rest for the wicked, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Them as wicked as it gets. I'll see Tyler. What's up? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I saw the invoice from Fireweed. When you were going through my stuff? Right. I, uh... We don't have to talk about it. Oh, uh, actually, no. I'm not going to let you tough guy your way out of this. You didn't have to do that, but you did. And going to Fireweed was everything. So, thank you. Okay? <laughs> okay, Tyler. You're welcome. Hmm. Nice. I want to apologize. I uh, feel like I owe you an apology. Oh, yeah? What for? Breaking and entering? <laughs> Invasion of privacy? Oh, sorry. It was messed up. Don't worry about it. Apology accepted. Just don't ever pull that shit again. I'll, I'll try. <laughs> well, see you around then? You know where to find me. Cool. Oh, that's nice. That's a good... I, I think go? that's a really good thing that happened. Oh, what happened there? Anyway. <laughs> anyway. I really think that's um, a really good outcome from this. Because I can understand why Eddie would be, like, trying to hide it from us, but... Because it's, it's a pretty cruel... Well, that went better than I was afraid it would. <laughs> it, it's a bit... Um, it's, it's a cruel history, and you don't really want to... I can understand that he doesn't want to bother us with that and, and make us go into stuff that's... Not what you would want some kids to go through, but in the end, like you said, we're adults and he shouldn't have kept it from us. Uh, it's our choice to make uh, if we want to know the truth or not. So I do understand why he, he said that and the way he, he took everything that's coming going on and that he says like, okay, well, we need to talk and then talk it out. 
it's nice that he says like, okay, what I did wasn't right, and I should have shouldn't have done that. And that he wants to make, uh, toughen up and say like, okay, I want to be a dad for you as well, so don't worry. That's, that's really nice. Are we going or are we? Do we need to do something else? Let's go out. That's it. Nope. Oh, well, he's gonna go. Allison, doing? Are we going? We need to talk to you. Can talk to you if I can. You two on your way out? Yeah, we've got stuff to do. You ready, Allison? Yep. Let's roll on. Well, don't be a stranger, Tyler. Sure. See you around. See you later. Cool. I'm happy everybody is so... See you around, Allison. You kids be careful out there, yeah? Ah, we will. Don't worry. As long as this weird night dude doesn't come up. Well, go. Yep. It was a very interesting part of the game. Allison. Wait. What? You feel like shit. How can you tell? Uh, because I feel like shit. What are we gonna do about Tessa? Nothing. Not much to do. We're not gonna do anything. That's enough, Tyler. Talk to Tessa. Why? What are you looking for? What are you expecting her to say? Yeah, that's true. I thought she loved us. Well, maybe she did. Really? Chief Brown, is it true? Is she? Oh my god. Ch children, I... Tessa. Tessa, you need to leave. Come on, kids. Well, she didn't want Everything to see Everything is going to be alright, okay? You're going to be okay, I promise. Go home. You can't be here right now. It's probably also what she didn't want. So she said that there might be abuse. Eddie had to say that to the child uh, services, and then because uh, Marianne Where was is everybody? likely to lose the children, somewhere. she probably couldn't take that. I wanted to commit suicide, maybe, or take the children I think I'm with her. Something. Well, at least we know the entire world didn't vanish. That's weird. What's going on here? But given who is here, we can't count out the rapture quite yet. <laughs> I need to take a breather. I'm gonna do a bit of shopping. You look for Tessa, okay? Oh, it's fine. She's probably in the uh, the office. I stopped to take a leak just or there is any, or there's some place. stuff that I can do here. A big old boat was staring me down. So, what do I do? Hey guys, I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. Oh, hey, Tyler Ronan. Oh, that's huh. that guy. We keep bumping into each other, don't we? What were you guys talking about? I don't think you'd be interested. Okay. So, what's your, your plan? You two just can't stay away, huh? Unfortunately. We're looking for Tessa again. She took off about half an hour ago. Oh. Sorry. Will she be back? Do you know if she'll be back soon? I don't know if she's even coming back. No Wait, one what? tells me anything. Oh. Tom busy? How about Tom? He busy? He's been in the office all morning, so who knows? But it's Tom, so it's probably safe to interrupt him. Heh. <laughs> yeah, you're probably... He, he looks like a goodie. Bang. Right into each other. Oh. Go to Tom. Wonder what he has to say. Knock knock. I thought you were working at the diner today. No, I switched just because I wanted to Come in! Hey! I was Open up. <laughs> oh, and if you're wondering why I'm coughing every time I have a little itch in my throat that's We've gonna stay there for a week or something. It should have at least been enough to stall construction while we figure out our next move. Well, why don't we schedule a meeting with the Alaska Wildlife Foundation? Try to get their support. Look, Harold, I have to go. We can pick this up at the meeting. I, I should be on my way over soon. Well, hello there. Hello, Tyler. 
Uh, can I help you? Yes. Hey, I so. hope this isn't a bad time, but is Tessa around today? She had to step out for a family matter. This wouldn't be something I could help with, would it? Yeah, maybe, actually. Uh, we were over at the police station, and we took a look at Marianne's case file. <clears throat> okay. Why was Tessa at the station? He probably doesn't... Why know. did Tessa come to the police station that night? She was looking for you two. To make sure you were okay. When she heard what happened, she was a mess. How exactly did she hear about it so fast? Yeah. Can't remember who called, but... You know how it is. No news travels faster than a secret. Everyone knew five minutes after Brown was on his way out. Wait, wh how then? Tessa reported Marianne. Why was Tessa at the station thing? Well, let's just ask. Tessa reported Marianne to social services. Did you know? Vaguely. But I didn't get involved. Yeah, I thought so. I, I didn't think I really had anything to add. You never thought to mention it? Well, no. I'm not sure how a thing like that would have come up. And I didn't want to rub salt in any wounds. Huh. Yeah. How about when we were in the store yesterday asking about it point blank? That was between you and Tessa. I try to stay out of other people's affairs. That's a good, a good thing. That's a good thing to do. Okay. Thank you. Look, I'm sorry if you felt... resistance from people around here. To put it mildly. Allison, you know this better than anybody. But your mother's death left a scar on this community. Now, I won't claim we went through anything close to what you did, but it was a cruel reminder of the limits of trust. Yeah, that's true. Well, if we want to get past the limits of trust, we all need to face what happened, which means being completely honest about it. We all sure. want to find peace, kids. It's just harder for some people to talk about the past. Now, you let me know if you have any other questions, okay? Okay. Hey. Yes? You said I should remind you not to be late for your meeting, so... Don't be late. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yep, I'll be on my way in a minute. Uh, so, kids, was there uh, anything uh, else you two you'll... wanted to talk to me about? Did you ever hear any rumors about our mother? Like, who our father might have been? Mm, I'm not exactly a rumor monger. Your mother was close to a few men, but whether they were your father, I mm. couldn't say. Weird. But, logical. But look, I... Oh, gosh. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I really have to go. Uh, Michael, could you finish up the storage room and then just uh, close up? Hey, it's sure thing, boss man. See you later. I don't know if he's using the meeting. You two want to help a brother out, spend the afternoon here working for free? No. Why not? We came here to talk to Tessa, and she's not here. Uh, she, she's at the cemetery, uh, visiting her parents. Okay. Oh. Well, well, that's a good reason. Hey, tell you what. Why don't you guys help me close the store, and then we can drive over together. I've been meaning to pay my uncle a visit. Can't we just wait for her to come back here? I, yeah. I'm not really excited about going there. Allison, we don't have to visit her grave. I'm gonna start working in the storage room. Tyler, join me when you're done. Sure thing. Just give me a sec. Ooh, damn, that's a, a nasty place you don't wanna go. Where'd that question about our father come from? Well. I would be curious. I've just been thinking about who he might be. And if he knows anything that could help us figure this shit out. Why? He wasn't a part of our lives. Besides, Marianne always said we never had a father. Well, her name might have been Mary, but I don't think she was a likely candidate for Immaculate Conception. <laughs> that's, that's certainly true. That's certainly true. Okay, so I need to find the guy in storage. I already lost his name. Yeah, those are big doors for storage. 
Oh, that's a big storage. All right. I already counted there, but I just <laughs> need you to double check a few things. It's not complicated. I've got this in the back. Oh, yeah? Because you're just that good, huh? Uh, yeah, of course. I'm just clowning. I'm clowning. I don't even know where to begin. What do I do? Yeah, let's start with an easy one, all right? Go to the back of the room and uh, tell me how many cans of Molto Bene brand tomato sauce we have left. Aye, aye. Those are not cans of tomato sauce. Those are not the cans. Oh, there they are. Hold on. Let me count this. Eh. Uh, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's twelve. Fourteen. There's fourteen cans of Malta Bene tomato sauce. Okay. Sounds about right. Man, I'm so good at this. <laughs> that was easy. I need you to count the bottles of bleach for me. Bottles of bleach? There's that. And where are they at exactly? I thought you had this in the bag. Okay. I'll give you a hint. Tessa puts the heavy stuff near the door <laughs> on the bottom shelves. All right, I think I can work with that. I guess that this is the bleach. Oh, there's the bleach. Count them. <laughs> oh, this is uh, five. Six? All right. Not bad, Tyler. Not bad. Careful. They might give me your job. Oh, you can have it. Uh, what's next? Come here and help me with this. Help you with that. What's up? I need your opinion on this masterpiece. <laughs> Is that supposed to be me? Yeah, come on. Look at the hair. Nailed it, right? Beautiful. Honestly, it's beautiful. I couldn't hey, even do it myself. Don't make fun of me. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> oh, maybe a little bit, but <laughs> I like it. It's great. For real. Well, it helps to have a good model. So, this is what you're up to while I was out there doing your work? What can I say? I'm a multitasker. Hey, multitasker? I think you made a mistake here. A delegator. Total amount should be 36. Oh, how dare you, sir? What? <laughs> I just don't want you to get in trouble. Yeah, you're right. You know, I'm off my game today. Nice. All right, anything else you wanted me to check? Yep, one last thing, and then we should be free from this purgatory. Hit me. Can you count how many plushies we have in that box over there? Plushies. Okay. Okay. Plushies in that box over there. That sounds great. Let's see. Plushies in a box over there. And is that a plushie? Plushies in a box over there. Is this is this a plushie? So. Are you kidding me? Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, I guess. Uh, you've got about eleven left in that box. Did I get it wrong? Michael? Yeah, Michael, where? Ouch, Ow, what, what the fuck? Hey, sorry. It was just too tempting. God damn. <laughs> You got me worried there, man. Lesson number one in the ancient art of inventory. Never let your guard down. <laughs> you have no idea what you just started. First one with three confirmed hits wins. Cool. Wait, how do I throw? How do I throw? Wait. Oh, wait. Just... Damn, overshot it. Oh, come on. Is that all you got, Ronan? Just you wait. I've got a strategy. Where is he? Oh, yeah? We'll see. Where is he? Damn, overshot it. How do I... Wait, how do... So, is this a typical work day for you? Nah, I usually don't have such good looking company back here. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Allison you said that. Uh, 
She's usually stuck in the office. Besides, your sister, while a hottie, isn't my type. Oh, why don't you get your head up? Boom! That's one. Let's uh, change cover here, real quick. Oh shit. Is that all you got? Miss me. <laughs> hey, is it cool that we're throwing these toys around? Aren't you guys gonna like sell them? Nah, supplier made a typo on Becky. Can't sell any of them. Cool. No harm, no foul then. Well, get your head up. Come on. Boom. Another one. One more hit and you're out. Prepare to feel my wrath. <laughs> God, you're corny. Yo, we better wrap this up soon. Well, take your head out somewhere. Gotcha. Wait, there was three. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Man, you're good. <laughs> I told you not to doubt the golden arm. <laughs> well, I'll never make that mistake again. Okay. I, I need to finish this inventory thing real quick. Your sister's probably done already. <laughs> Here. Let's hit the bitch's grotto. The what? Fancy name for the couch where Allison and I sit during breaks. Ah, all right, cool. Let me see what you've done with the place. Is that the mangy muskrat? Well, I'm just taking that. How's this? Is that a picture of a priest with little hearts? Yeah. That's the hot priest who hosts Bible study with Tessa. And for the record, that was Allison's doing. She had a crush on him for ages, but he is very, very hot. Shit, yeah. I remember him from when we were kids. That's Father Batista. Yeah, he's got that silver fox thing going on now, see? Yeah, yep, I see it. Oh, hey, see that container? That's for you. Huh? It's the trout I caught yesterday at the buzzard hole. Grilled it up with my world-renowned marinade. Nice. World-renowned mar oh, marinade. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you. World-renowned marinade, huh? What's in it? A magician never reveals his secrets. Oh, that's, uh... Awesome. Anything else here? Apparently not. Sit. Sit. Tyler, sit. Sit. You're not really listening, are you? Whoa. <laughs> Is this Chief Brown? Yeah. Are you guys related or? Nah, but same clan. Hmm. So. You think Tom's got the chops to be the mayor of Delos Crossing? Uh, I don't know. The guy's sweet and not entirely incompetent, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. Vote for him to vote for Tessa. She'd be the one running the show. What about Tom's politics? What do you think about Tom's policy ideas? He's got a few surprisingly bold stances. Yeah, like his gun regulations. I gotta admit, I'm pretty impressed he's pushing for that out here. Exactly, but I'm not totally sure how I feel about that though, to be honest. Really? Really. Historically speaking, the government taking weapons away from my people has not gone well for us. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. I never thought about it that way. So I take it you're not Tessa's biggest fan? Yeah, you know, every time I put up flyers for queer events, she accidentally covers them. Yeah. Well. 
Ever confronted her? No way. Have you ever confronted her about it? Nah. <laughs> I just keep my head down and count the days until Juno. Man, that has to be rough. It is. But out here, just surviving is a form of protest. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Alright. Oh, and wanted, okay. I'm done. Good. Go. Oh. You're done? I'm done. Oh, we can talk. I gotta tell you, it's so weird to finally meet the other Ronin. You mean the OG Ronin? <laughs> I was born first, you know. Is that so? I thought Allison said she was. Well, our mother never actually told us, but it was me. So, why is it so weird to meet me? Because I just heard Allison tell your story so many times. She told me everything about you. Fireweed, your transition. I hope that's okay, by the way. Yeah, it's fine. She asked me first. <laughs> yeah, figures. That lady is thorough and she loves you like crazy. I know. So, yeah, uh, you were probably the first person to know about it other than Allison. I'm glad he trusted me. And it's great to finally get to know you in the flesh. You're pretty all right. Yeah, you're not too bad yourself. <laughs> but you're not too bad yourself. I try not to be. Especially around guys I'm trying to impress. So I wasn't blowing smoke when I said you should move to Juno with us. I know. I... I've got a community there. Could be yours too. Hmm. Fitting in. There's a concept. Y you have no idea how life-saving a chosen family can be. It pulled me out of the dark more times than I can count. I yeah. hear you. Hey, can I ask you a question? Of course. Shoot. Why do you care so much if I move to Juno? <laughs> Look, like I said, I, I want to get to know you. Because I'm just that fascinating, huh? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. You might be one of a kind, Tyler Ronan. Well, uh, this is... Uh, well, let's just do that. Well, golly gee, Michael. I think you're swell, too. You're the cat's pajamas. <laughs> Shut up. I've got way better compliments than that. But I can't open with my best, right? It's cool. So, I'll get more of those if I get to know you better? For sure. If that's something you'd be interested in. Hmm. I might be. Interested? Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Hey. I've been standing at that counter for an hour waiting for you two dum-dums to come back. Are you guys ready to go? Mm-hmm. I think we've no. done about as much damage as we can back here. Yeah. Let's go. We need to turn off the lights. Oh, wait. It's over there. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Let's see what we can do with the next chapter. Here we are. Here we are where? Lakeview Cemetery. Thanks for letting me hit your ride over. No problem. You sure we can't drive you back? Nah. You're like stretching my legs. It isn't far. And anyway, can't put the wind in a bottle. There's someone else there as well. <laughs> All right. Tessa should be at her parents' grave, not far from the entrance. Oh, yes, Tessa's there. Look for a big, crooked tree. You can't miss it. I'm gonna go check in with my uncle. Good luck. For real. And that's where we're gonna leave it here thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed uh this is getting more interesting by the minute um i really wonder what's going what, what what really happened with marianne i hope we get to know more about that it's so interesting to see how the, the twins are settling in and trying to get to know what's going on um i understand why 
Alison would be a bit hesitant to do that. Um, and why Tyler would be, like, trying to push for that. I do think Tyler is right in this regard that having the truth is more worthwhile than just having your own emotions be saved. Uh, the truth is almost always pretty hard to handle. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen next because now we're at a cemetery where the mother is, uh, is, uh, has her grave. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm stoked to uh, get to the next part, so um, if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe and uh, click that notification bell so you get a reminder and a notification when I upload that one. And there's nothing else to say, then see you in the next video. Cheers!